Hi everybody, thank you again for joining me. Um, I'm really happy to have you here today. Today we are going to be making four beautiful cards with the House Mouse stamp set. This stamp set is so cute. The detailed images are adorable um, and they are so good for so many different occasions. So I hope you'll like what we make today. The cards we're going to be making today are interactive cards. Um, I immediately had the idea when I saw the little mouse with the angel wings. Um, and when I saw him, he looked like he was in motion and it just gave me the idea to create these cards that are going to be in motion. Um, each card has a different mechanism, so I hope you'll be inspired uh, to create some motion cards of your own. These stamps are red rubber cling stamps, um, and that allows them to be super detailed. The images are just crystal clear, um, and each little fur piece on these mice, they are just absolutely visible and um, just super, super detailed, so I love that. The type of detail you can't really get from um, the polymer stamps, um, so there is a place for both. I do enjoy the polymer stamps because I like being able to see where I'm stamping, um, but for fine detail, it's hard to beat the red rubber stamps. Now you'll notice that I did make three of the little angel guy, um, and that's because one of my cards is going to be a spinner card, so I wanted the angel to be on both sides of the card. So um, I am going to be making two separate cards with the little angel, uh, but one of those cards is going to use two of the images. Cutting them all out with the fur was not easy. Um, I did have to finagle it a little bit. It would have been great if there had been dyes, but um, I don't really see many people cutting out the house mouse stamps. I see people usually making like one layer cards with them, which is great too. Um, but I like to be able to cut them out. Um, so I did have to perform a little tailectomy on the, the angel guy um, for the spinner card because otherwise he wouldn't have been able to spin. I'm using these nesting dies from Spellbinders to create um, the little ornament that is going to be on the front of my card. Um, and then just picking some uh, colors out of my stash, some Christmassy colors, a gold, a red, um, and uh, a green. I embossed the two circles with um, kind of a fair isle embossing folder, and then I used um, the Simon Hurley Lunar Paste uh, in the gold to um, kind of give a little more accent on the raised parts. I cut out little halos for my angel guys because I thought they needed it. And can I take a moment here to say how much I love my sidekick? Um, it does, I don't see it getting a ton of love from other crafters, um, but I love it because I'm not actually a huge die cutting fan. Um, and having to get out my big die cut machine uh, gets to be just such a pain sometimes and trying to arrange um, all those, uh, those plates. Um, but the sidekick is super easy to use, so I do love that whenever I'm cutting something that's not too big large machine I did cut a um, card base with a big circle in it and then I cut another panel to go behind it just to add it some stability and then when I put in that ornament that we're making right now I need something to uh, sandwich that string between so right now I'm sandwiching the string between um, the two sides of the ornament that I made um, and it's just you know twine that I had from another kit of some sort um, and I'm doing a lot of glue because I do want this to be um, held together very well though I did tape it down first so you know, this is going to have a lot of strain and a little pressure put on it, so it's good to have as much extra adhesive as possible to make sure that it stays really well. I used two nesting circle dies to create a frame um, to frame the outline of the window on the front. I thought that gave it a little nice touch um, to just kind of highlight the uh, ornament that we're making. For the sentiment, I'm going to go ahead and use um, one of the Better Press sentiments um, from this plate that cuts out multiple Christmas sentiments. Um, so I have Merry and Bright and um, Tis the Season. And now you can see how that element is going to spin in the card. So when you wind up that, um, that ornament and you kind of spin it and then you um, hold the card as you would like in, a, um, in an envelope, it'll stay flat like that. And then when you open it, it'll spin because you have wound up um, that string and so there's going to be some tension on it. To decorate the rest of the front of the card, I'm going to go ahead and use uh, these pine bow dies, again from Spellbinders. Um, these were much bigger than I thought they were. I got these in the most recent clearance sale, um, but they actually worked out well. Um, but in my head, they were much smaller, and I was going to use them for smaller embellishments. Um, but this big size is really nice, too, because you can go ahead and uh, cut the smaller pieces out of it. So I'm just using some markers, no rhyme or reason. Um, these are Copic markers, but nothing special that I'm doing here, um, just to give it a little bit more dimension. Green gems that I also got from um, a Spellbinder sale. Um, these really are nice. They look like they're shining lights uh, in a Christmas tree, so I thought that was really cute. And then you'll see here as I wind up the card, 
and then when I open it, it's going to spin. And I did put a panel behind the ornament there so that you can uh, write your own message and uh, sentiment and greeting. And there you go, there it spins. I think that guy is just so cute. I think this card is a great Christmas card, and I think anybody who receives it will be um, really happy and uh, thrilled with um, getting something like that. Next card, we're going to be using this parasol die from Spellbinders. Um, and when I saw it, that cone shape immediately suggested to me not just a parasol, but it suggested to me a party hat. And when I saw the little mouse with the party hat, I thought these two have to go together. So I thought, what could be cuter than a little mouse coming out of the party hat? Um, and so for that, I thought making it an interactive die just made sense. That image of the little mouse with the streamers trailing behind him also just suggests movement. So um, having that guy I come out of the party hat just made sense to me. I made a card base and now I'm just cutting a slit where I want the uh, piece uh, that's going to give us the movement to go. Um, there are companies that make dies for these but I didn't have them and it's easy enough to just cut a slit and then cut it just slightly bigger than that um, so that you can actually put a little piece of foam tape there um, to adhere it to the image that you're wanting to move. Um, so this is a fairly straightforward idea but it can be a little tricky to um, execute. Now here I'm just creating a little tab um, to have where uh, the, the mechanism is going to be pulled out. And again, there are companies that make these, um, but you don't need them. You can make it yourself. I'm just making a little brace here out of a piece of scrap paper that I'm going to use to then hold um, the mechanism in place. I create two of them because you're going to want one on each side of the mechanism, and then I'm just going to glue them onto the card directly. And then the mechanism, uh, the pull tab, actually just goes in between, and that way um, it's in the card, but it'll slide very easily between those two little braces that we create. And you'll see here how it works, so I just slip it in between those two braces, and you can pull it off to the side um, where that little tab that we made is and it just moves back and forth very easily. And so you can kind of see where we're going to put the foam tape and then have um, the mouse uh, attached to the foam tape, just like that. Now this is a five by seven card base because these are pretty large images and um, the parasol die is pretty large itself. Um, so I wanted to have enough room to be able to get everything on there. Now this did require a little bit of finagling to get right um, and to make sure that everything could um, move properly with all the elements on it. But once you understand how the mechanism works, um, it's pretty straightforward to make. Now one of the things I also needed to do was to add a little um, bumper on the back end because otherwise um, it could easily pull out completely and um, then it would fall out of its space. So. I'm cutting that off there, um, and then I realize, oh wait, I need to put a bumper there. So I actually take um, the foam tape that I already had on there and add it uh, to the end um, to make a bumper because I also realized I needed a larger piece of foam tape uh, where I was going to put the mouse to be able to hold the mouse on. While I'm finishing up this mechanism, I just did want to remind you guys about the giveaway that I'm having. I'm giving away a Spellbinders advent calendar, a glue press, a bundle of stamps and dies, um, and the contest is going until November 15th, 2023, or until I hit 1000 subscribers, whichever comes first. Um, so like, subscribe, comment, and you too can win. The link is right there. As I was playing around with the mechanism, I realized that I need that brace to be a little closer to the center. These things happen, especially because, you know, we're making this from scratch. We're not using a die set to make this. So um, it'll take a little bit of trial and error to get it uh, the way that you want it, but that was easy enough. I just moved it and re-glued it into the correct spot. This next part is going to be very inelegant because I always use scraps um, and scrap foam panels um, for areas where it's not going to be seen and it doesn't matter. Um, so I just go ahead and I adhere foam um, all around the mechanism, um, making sure not to block the mechanism. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and put those foam panels on. Um, and then when I close my card, um, the mechanism will still be able to move, um, but those foam panels will lift it up so that um, the mechanism uh, is not caught in between the card. Now that the card base with the mechanism is completely um, put together, I can go ahead and put the rest of my card together. So I go ahead and adhere the little mouse there, and I test him out, and he works. And I'm going to go ahead and make that party hat, and I thought I'm going to add some streamers, um, the same color as the streamers that uh, the little mouse is pulling behind him. So it kind of looks like he's pulling the streamers from the hat. I want to give the card a little bit more dimension, so I go ahead and kind of create a vignette 
uh, kind of feel. Um, just using some Distress Oxide along the edges there to kind of uh, just highlight the little mouse in the center. I'm going to go ahead and adhere that party hat, making certain not to block the mechanism um, and not to accidentally glue the little mouse um, because after all this work, that would be um, really annoying if we had to undo it. Um, so just being careful in those moments when you're gluing an element that's hiding the element that's popping out um, to not block that element. The stamp set did come with uh, two sentiments, let's party and uh, happiest of birthdays. Um, and so I decided to go ahead and use those sentiments um, and have the let's party uh, coming out with the mouse as he's coming out of the uh, party hat. Um, and what is a party without some glitter? So that I did make a big mess there, um, but it looks like the glitter is falling out of the party hat as well. So then I just adhered the whole thing to a card base and there is my completed card another interactive card and when you pull him out he says let's party moving on to our next set i'm going to be using this magic of christmas better press plate this is a new one and um, it's become one of my favorites i think it's so versatile um, that arch in the center matches a die set that they have um, and i'm able to use that for a lot of different elements and so for this particular card i decided i'd use um, the the mouse the angel mouse in the center I'm just using the watercolor set that I just got um, a few weeks back, and this has become my favorite very quickly because it's very portable, compact, but there's so many colors in it, um, and that is linked down below. Watercolors just allow me to make a card so quickly, um, and yet it's still really beautiful and elegant. Um, and that silver paintbrush um, allows me to get into the really fine lines and details. I'm just adding a little bit of uh, Distress uh, Oxide inks there, um, just in the center to just give it a little bit more color um, where I'm going to put my mouse. Just cut a little hole there in the card with an oval die, a really small oval die. Um, and I'm going to take a penny, and this is an idea that I got from Jennifer McGuire. I'm going to take a penny and use that kind of as a pendulum um, and place it behind my little mouse, and that's going to cause my mouse to swing back and forth. Um, so it'll look like he's flying down um, and uh, that he's going to land on the pine boughs or something. With a piece of scrap paper, I'm just creating a pendulum. I just tape that on, um, and then um, it is good to use these dots, these foam dots, uh, for something like this because it allows a lot of movement. Um, so that's why I'm using that instead of my usual trusty foam panel. So you can see it moves back and forth like that. The penny on the back provides the counterweight, um, and so when it, you move it back and forth, the penny moves, and um, it allows the, the little mouse to move also. So I am using the foam panels to just prop this up. Um, in hindsight, I would have used two layers of the foam panels. Um, I didn't prop it up quite enough for um, the pendulum to move as easily as I would have liked to, but live and learn. I think uh, it still works though. And then just gluing that down onto a card base. Um, and then I'm going to use the Better Press Sentiments from the previous uh, card that we made earlier, the previous Christmas card. Um, and I'm just going to use one of those as well. I love how those sentiments easily pop out um, and you can create so many at once. So I'm then just adhering that to the front of my card base. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and add a few little gems. Uh, I picked red to kind of match the little holly berries that are also on the card. Um, and then that is the card pretty much done. And you can kind of see it swinging back and forth there. Like I said, I should have um, raised it up on more foam tape uh, to give it a little bit more room to wiggle, but I think it's still really cute um, and it does still move quite a bit. I think this little guy might be the favorite of the cards that I've made today just because it's so simple and cute um, and really quick and easy to make. Now for my next card, I'm going to be making um, two card bases and then I'm going to be combining them together um, to create a uh, kind of a tri-fold design um, that allows you to have kind of like one very long card. And you'll see what I mean when I'm putting it together. But I'm going to take those two card bases and kind of slip one inside the other and then glue the two pieces where they connect. And then when you pull it all up, it creates one long card base. Inspiration for this card came from Spellbinder's Serenade of Autumn release, um, which this sunflower stencil is from, uh, which is also linked down below. Um, and this is such a cool card. Um, it's all the different pieces all at once, um, and so it makes it very easy to create just this beautiful layering sunflower.
saw the little mouse um, with the measuring tape, uh, the immediate thought I had was of having the mouse in this field of sunflowers. Um, and especially when I saw a sentiment that came in the um, die cuts of the Serenade of Autumn release, which was um, stand tall, I thought, you know what, this is a great sentiment for a card where these mice would be in a field of sunflowers. And I can see this mouse uh, just measuring itself up against um, the, the stem of the sunflower because you know how beautiful sunflowers are just so tall. So that's what I wanted to create here. I wanted to create a little sunflower field um, and kind of create the effect of the mice just being these tiny little creatures in this field of beautiful, tall, gorgeous sunflowers created my own stencils for the stems of the sunflowers um, and you can see I'm just kind of looking where this will go and uh, kind of where the stem placements can go. So I just cut just a long line and because it, you know it's a stem it doesn't matter that it's straight or not and so it's not very straight um, but then I go ahead and use that one stencil that I create to make lots of different stems. I also use the petals and leaves from the stencil that we just used to create our beautiful sunflower image. Um, and I go ahead and I use that to kind of create the effect of being in like a forest field of sunflowers, just, you know, kind of just a riot of sunflowers um, and the mice just kind of being hidden away, tucked away in there. Um, and there's just no rhyme or reason. I'm just going ahead and uh, kind of just giving that effect of the leaves all over the place there. Then I'm going to go ahead and adhere my mouse image um, and you can see there that I did cut it down um, but I also made it so that it looks like I think uh, in between um, that they are actually still in that field of sunflowers. I'm making more sunflowers um, and this I'm going to use to pop up onto the uh, front of the card um, and it is going to hide the sunflowers that we already have on there a little bit but that's okay it just gives that effect of having lots of different sunflowers on there. And I did use some lunar paste to give it a little extra glimmer and glow, which I always love to do. And it's so easy to clean up this stencil. Um, I really love that. I just use a little baby wipe and then it cleans up really easily. I'm just fussy cutting here um, and you can kind of see a little bit of that glow. Um, I did create more than one of the sunflower images, which I'll use for another card because it is so easy to create multiple images at once with this sunflower stencil. Just popping that up on some foam tape and then I'm going to go ahead and adhere it to the front of the card base. And there you go, when you pull it up, you can see it just pops up like that. I thought it did need a little extra element so I used one of the um, butterflies from the Serenade of Autumn release as well. And then this sentiment, stand tall and keep your face to the sunshine, I just thought that could not be more perfect for this card. Um, and that came in the Spellbinders die cuts from the Serenade of Autumn set. Now I'm just going ahead and adding uh, more ink there to make it look like he's really standing behind a stem. And that is my completed card. And then I'm just going to go ahead and adhere it to a card base. Um, I did add one of the chipboard die cut pieces that says thinking of you on there. Um, and I thought that went well with the stand tall, keep your face to the sunshine sentiment. Just gluing it onto a card base. And then there is my completed card. What do you guys think? I think this one is really special. I think it's really cute. Um, I just love how all of these different elements work together so well and create just this effect of these cute little mice in this field of sunflowers, super tall sunflowers. So those are the interactive cards that we have made today. Um, I really enjoyed making them. I had a lot of fun. I felt very creative in making them. Um, and I'd love to know if you guys use any of these elements to make your own interactive cards. I'll catch you guys later. Thanks so much for watching. Please like, subscribe, and save if you enjoyed this video.